Hey everyone, what's up? Uh, today I just want to really quickly go over my lab results because I just got those back the other day. They tested me for everything to see if my levels of stuff were where they should be to see if I had any deficiencies or whatever going on. And basically my vitamin levels all across the board were perfect. In fact, they were better than most people. But um, I do have two deficiencies going on. So I'm going to talk a little bit about those and why um, those might be going on. So I do have a vitamin B12 deficiency and a vitamin D deficiency going on. Um, the normal range of B12 in people, the normal minimum is 200 and the normal maximum is 2100 according to them. What um, research and studies actually point to being healthy levels are 550, 550 and above for B12. I was right at 211, so technically I'm not really deficient according to them, but I'm right on that lower level, and so they wanted to take care of that. And then my vitamin D level was extremely low. The normal minimum that they accept is 30, and the normal maximum is 100, and I was 11. So, um, in their words, impressively low on vitamin D. They couldn't imagine how this even happened. So, I want to talk about that a little bit too. When I got home and my husband heard about these deficiencies that I have going on, his first question was, if the way that you're eating is the way that we're supposed to eat, and if it's so natural and so healthy, why would you have any deficiencies? Completely valid question. A lot of people think that B12 um, is naturally found in animals, but it's not found in plants, and that's why vegans are so deficient in B12. The thing people forget is that we're animals too, and if B12 naturally occurred in animals, then we wouldn't have a problem. We would naturally have it in our system, and nobody would ever be deficient. B12 comes from bacteria. It's not naturally occurring in plants or animals. It's synthesized by bacteria. In really rich, fertile soil, you're going to find a lot of the bacteria that produce B12. And this is how we get it, and this is how animals get it. The soil that the plants grow in has the bacteria that synthesize the B12, and then the soils on the plants, and one of two things happens. An animal eats the plant with the soil included and they get that B12 or we wash our produce and we wash the soil down the sink and then we don't get the B12. And this is assuming that the soil actually has that bacteria in it. These days our soil is no longer fertile, we're damaging the earth, we're not farming the way that we were supposed to, um, we're reusing crops over and over and over again and depleting the soil and so um, a lot of times there just isn't a lot of bacteria in the soil anyway. There's chlorinated water going into the soil, there are pesticides, so there probably isn't a lot of this bacteria in the soil to begin with. Studies suggest that most people are deficient in B12, not just vegans. Vegans are found to be B12 more often because when you go to the doctor and you say you're vegan, like they want to check your B12 immediately. That's what happened to me. They immediately said, um, oh, you've missed a couple periods. I wonder if it's your B12, even though B12 has absolutely nothing to do with that. I'm grateful though because being vegan means that they're going to check a lot of things that they don't check in meat eaters, so um, if you have any deficiencies, they will be found if you're vegan. I will say this, I do supplement. Um, I don't think that you need to supplement, um, as in like taking a multivitamin or whatever. I don't think that that's completely necessary unless you're somebody like me where um, some days I don't eat until 4 in the afternoon. Uh, there are like 8 hour chunks of time at school where I can't eat things like that. I feel like I'm not eating as much as I normally would be eating and I'm not eating um, like a wide variety of things that I, I normally would be eating if I were eating throughout the day and so I choose to supplement. And this vegan, it's a prenatal and it has a lot of B12 in it, like I think 300% of what you're supposed to get and still I'm deficient in B12. Well there are a number of reasons that this can happen. Um, one can be that something in your body is depleting your B12 stores. This can happen with parasites. Or you can be putting a toxin into your body that depletes your vitamin stores. Like for instance, uh, cyanide and cigarettes will do this. Another issue could be someone's intrinsic factor. So there are a lot of internal things that can be going on also to um, like prevent you from absorbing your B12. 
But the fact of the matter is that um, pills and uh, sublinguals, which means uh, things that you put under your tongue, which are supposed to go right into your bloodstream, those don't work for everyone. They even have B12 patches, and they don't always work. For whatever reason, it just doesn't work. And absolutely, doctors agree, um, medical experts agree, and my doctor wants me to also get injections. I'll be having injections of B12 once a week for six weeks, and then after that, um, provided that my levels are uh, up, then I'll do one um, injection a month just for maintenance. All right, so my vitamin D level. Little fact about vitamin D. This is my favorite thing about vitamin D. You would have to drink 12 gallons of milk, 12 gallons of milk, to get the amount of vitamin D that you would get from just being in the sun for 20 minutes. And that's sun without any sunblock. Being out in the sun is incredibly important. You should be out in the sun um, with at least your face and your hands exposed for 20 to 30 minutes, three times a week at least. So why am I so deficient in vitamin D? I mean, like, that's incredible. The minimum, again, is 30, and I was at 11. Well, the reason for that is that I am originally from the desert. I'm used to heat, I'm used to sun and warmth and things like that. And then a few years ago, I moved to a climate that uh, to me is incredibly cold. It snows in the winter, and I start getting cold at, like, I don't know, in late August. When other people are fine wearing sweaters, I'm like bundled up in, you know, six layers and wearing um, long underwear and things like that. And so um, when it's like chilly out, I don't go outside. Stores of vitamin D are kept in the body for a few months at a time. And so if you know that you're coming up on a cold season, you can get a lot of sun and store up on vitamin D that'll last you like the next few months but um, for me like six months out of the year and that's being generous I don't like to go outside here thankfully we are moving in a couple years so this shouldn't be um, an issue for me much longer but uh, getting sun is really hard for me I might just have to buck up and bundle up and go get my face in the sun sometimes when it is sunny but a lot of days it, it just isn't even sunny outside so um, I will be supplementing vitamin D in the colder months um, because I just don't get enough sun and obviously um, I don't want to, I don't think that um, getting vitamin D from fortified things is worth it because there are a lot of other chemicals in there, there are a lot of other toxins in there and I would rather get my vitamin D from the most natural source. Taking an injection definitely is not natural, and I know it makes people question this diet, but the thing is, is that everybody needs to supplement. I mean, uh, people on the paleo diet supplement. People who are, you know, extremely healthy athletes, they supplement stuff. Most people I know take a multivitamin every day, and those people eat meat, and they eat um, things that they think are really healthy. The reason that this is necessary for everyone is just because we don't live in a natural world. We've damaged everything. I mean, even meat eaters, they're not doing it um, the natural way. Most people are not going out and hunting for their own meat, and even if they do, guns aren't natural, you know? It's just, it's not, it's not natural. Anything that we're doing to um, the earth, the planet, what we've done to the soil, our farming, it's just none of it's natural. And so um, you do the best you can with the world that you've got and you try to be as natural as possible. And um, the closest to natural that I can be is being raw vegan, um, eating the way that nature intended. And then um, unfortunately plants just aren't grown the way that they're meant to be in nature isn't as it was intended in the first place and so I do feel that supplementing is necessary. Obviously I'm low on vitamin D and B12 and so I will be supplementing those and then some. I don't really feel, um, I would rather be safe than sorry. I'd rather have that safety net of other supplements to make sure that all my vitamin levels are up so I don't constantly have to go to the doctor getting my levels checked. So I'll do another video on my supplements. Um, there are a few things that I take. I prefer, um, like, they have raw shakes and stuff like that, and I like those. I like adding a scoop of that to, like, a banana smoothie or whatever just to make sure that I have all the vitamins that I need and that I'm getting a wide variety of nutrients and stuff that I may not otherwise have the time in my life to eat. I'll be getting my vitamin D from the sun uh, when it's warmer, and I'll be getting... Uh, vitamin D from a pill <laughs> when it's colder. Um, like I said, you just have to do what you have to do. I prefer to get my nutrients from whole foods 
God intended for us to get our vitamins from uh, fruits and vegetables, and the only reason that animals contain any vitamins is because they eat vegetables. That's where they get their vitamins. So basically, if you eat meat, you're getting your vitamins through a dirty filter. The animal is eating the plants, getting the vitamins, and then you're eating the animal. Why not eat the plants? So, um, like I said in previous videos, I've been feeling really, really good, really energetic. I've been working out, I've been functioning just fine, and so um, I was really surprised that I was deficient in B12 because that has a lot to do with metabolism and energy, and um, basically I had, I've had one shot, I have one shot on Friday, and this Friday I'm having another shot, and then I'm just going to start giving myself the shots. I told them I don't need to come to your office every week, I'll just do it myself. Um, so after this week I'll be administering them myself. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to feeling better because they said they were surprised that I could function. And uh, I told them, like, I feel so amazing. I can't imagine how I'm going to feel when my B12 is up where it's supposed to be. I'm going to be, like, bouncing off the walls. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really happy that they're checking my levels of everything. I still have tests coming up. Um, I mentioned in another video that the reason I'm having these tests done is because I have missed a couple periods and that's common in this lifestyle to start missing periods and a lot of uh, doctors actually say that it's healthy to not have periods and that you're still ovulating but I just wanted to be sure because I don't believe everything that I read and I don't believe um, everybody that I see talk in a YouTube video and so um, I wanted to do that research myself and make sure that I'm okay so I encourage you guys to do that too go to your doctor see if you have deficiencies demand to get these things checked and if your doctor won't do it go find another doctor because you need to remember that you are the customer you're paying the doctor the doctor should be doing what you want them to do you should be taking charge of your own health so go get your vitamin levels checked and I will see you soon